Folks, hi, this is Darcy, and today I am going to show you how to make my slip-on head cover. I designed this pattern um, for those who are maybe not as adept at sewing. Um, I would consider this a beginner pattern. If you can sew a straight line, you can certainly make this head cover. But what I like the most about this particular pattern is it can be made in so many different ways. You can make it with vinyl, and you can back your vinyl with craft foam. You don't necessarily have to back it with craft foam because it is lined and if you use a, um, a fleece, which is a little thicker, it comes out quite nice. If you want to make it out of fabric, again, you can structure it with craft foam as a backing. Um, in this case, I just use Shape Flex, which is a medium to heavyweight iron-on interfacing with the cotton and then again the fleece gives it a nice structure um, it's it's a relaxed look and easy to use um, another thing you can do is what i'm going to do today to show you is i'm going to use just vinyl and no craft foam no um, shape flex shape flex and just use minky as the lining so it doesn't really matter how you want to make this um, soft, structured, non-structured. Um, the sewing is, is the same regardless. It's just in how you prep the fabric. One more thing I want to show you is that it's fun to um, sometimes uh, change things up and, and get a little creative. Um, you basically can use your pattern piece as a template and you can sew different fabrics together first. So in this case, I've drawn a 45 degree angle here and I'm going to insert this in between. And then when that's finished, when I've inserted it, ironed it and backed it with my uh, shape flex, then I'm going to use my pattern piece and cut it out. So that's how you can change up some of these different designs. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you so you can see but um, first things first, you must take your two pattern pieces as shown here and tape them together. All three pattern sizes, driver, fairway wood, and hybrid are two piece patterns. So you wanna tape them together and then cut them out. And then you will cut out two, one top, one bottom, and as you can see, they are exactly the same. And same with the lining, one top, and one bottom. And that is really all the cutting you need to do unless you are, again, using uh, shape flux. Then you'll need to cut out one top and one bottom of this. And if you are quilting, then you will need to cut out one top and one bottom of your craft foam. Um, it's all outlined in the, in the pattern, but that's pretty much it. And um, let's move to the sewing room and we'll talk a little bit about how to make this. Okay, we're gonna go through this step-by-step step using the pattern, but first I wanna show you what I did when I separated uh, the, the fabric um, with the bones. So what I ended up with is something like this. And then I went ahead and ironed on the shape flex to the back. Now I was very wasteful because I was just wanting to show you an example. I don't think I would waste that much fabric initially, but then I went ahead and traced around it. So now, once I cut this out, this is going to be our new front piece. When I do go ahead and complete this, I'm gonna make the back of this head cover um, solid with just the dog print. Um, I'll probably embroider a club designated number right there. Um, and maybe in the future, if I do this again, I might add a little bit of piping to just kind of you know, dress it up a little bit. But as I pointed out earlier, the options are endless um, as far as what you wanna do. But for simplicity, and just basically learning how to create the head cover, we're gonna go ahead with just the vinyl. We're not going to use shape flex on it because you certainly don't want to iron onto vinyl. And we're gonna have the soft, unstructured look. So we're going to just leave it as is. Um, I have my minky. And in our pattern, we talk about 
the different ways to quilt. If I were using vinyl, I could do a, a quilting stitches um, as I did in the one head cover. Uh, a diamond pattern you can do, uh, any kind of quilting, straight lines, etc. Or you can just, if you want a clean look, just attach the, fat, the craft foam to the vinyl or fabric by just sewing close to the edges. And that will still give you a structured look. Um, so here we talk about if you're using fabric or versus vinyl. If you're using fabric, you need to have either craft foam or um, shape flex or some other equivalent interfacing. The reason is because the soft cotton fabric is not enough on its own. Um, it, it will look very cheap or, you know, it just won't work. If you want to use an upholstery fabric, you may not need the, um, the backing of the craft foam. It all depends on how heavy the fabric is. Um, if you are omitting any uh, quilting stitches on the vinyl, you still will not use craft foam. Um, or I'm, I'm sorry, if you're omitting the, the craft foam and want a softer, more relaxed look, you don't have to use the craft foam. You can just start creating it exactly as it is, um, which I'm going to show you. So that this page pretty much addr addresses that, what we're talking about. The other thing I wanna point out is if you don't have an embroidery machine, because that is where we are now, is we've cut everything out and if we want to embellish on the top of our head cover, a club number or whatever, you would do so at this point. But if you don't have an embroidery machine um, and you wanna buy like a dog tag that has numbers on it or whatever to identify uh, what club it is, you wanna make a loop. And I show you just basically how to make the loop. I cut out a two inch piece of fabric and the first thing I did was fold it in half, wrong sides together, and I pressed that. And then I brought in each side to the middle fold line, just like that. And then I once again folded the whole thing in half and pressed it. Now I would stitch up and down both sides of this, creating my loop, and then I would just fold it in any manner that I wanted and attach it to the middle top of the head cover. But in this case, I would choose to embroider, but I'm not gonna do that right now. We're just gonna move forward with um, the next step, and that is creating the lines for the elastic. Okay, we have cut out two pieces, top and bottom. Um, the bottom has no elastic, but it still has the notches, and this is to help you line up when you're sewing the two together. So let's designate this piece the bottom and ignore it. So now we're going to mark for the elastic. And I like to use three pieces of elastic. So what you do with these notches is you would take a ruler and a pen, and this does not have to be ideally perfect because when it's all scrunched up together, it, it doesn't matter. But I would draw a top line, and then at the bottom of the notches, I would draw a bottom line. And then I wanna draw one roughly in the middle. So these three lines is where I'm going to apply my elastic. Now that we've marked both the lining and the um, actual body uh, top pieces, we are going to install the elastic. And I told you to get uh, 12 inches of maybe quarter inch braided elastic. That's what I have here. And um, we're going to install it onto the head cover first thing you want to do is widen your zigzag stitch. On my machine, right here, it designates what's the zigzag stitch. So I press number two, and I want to make it wide. So I'm going to widen it maybe up to a five, okay? The length, I'm sure, is fine. We'll figure it out when I start sewing. So now that I have my zigzag stitch, I'm going to line up my elastic on the first line, and I'm going to tack it in place by just going back and forth a few times. Okay, now what I want to do basically while I'm sewing is pull this elastic tight. But in order to do that, I have to have something to hold on to. So I need to sew maybe about you know, a quarter inch in to give me something to hold on to with this hand. And now I can pull this tight and continue my stitching.
And now when we get to this end, tack it again a few times in place. So that's number one. Now in, the, in this case, and what I told you in the pattern is to make sure you switch your thread to a coordinating color. I did not because I want you to see the line of stitching. So this is just a sample piece. But in this case, you would want to use a red thread. I have found now that it's easier for the next roll of elastic to do the bottom next. And you'll see why, because we're already bunched up and it makes it a little awkward to sew. So if you do the bottom line next, by doing your zigzag stitch, tacking it in place, and then moving in a few, um, you know, about a half inch, quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to pull again and see it'll flatten out the vinyl as I go. And if it doesn't, I just give it a little push down. Getting to the end, tacking in place. And now I'm going to do the middle line. And see how bunched up that is? You're thinking to yourself, I don't know how I could possibly sew that, but watch. Now, when I also said too, if I didn't put this directly in the middle, I can fix it now by maybe lining the, this edge up with the middle. That looks a little more appropriate uh, for centering. So last time, tack it in place, move in a little bit start pulling and as you see as we move through and this gets awkward but it doesn't matter how it looks you can see that it's flattening out as we go okay, and I'm pulling this as tight as I can especially when you're using vinyl all right so this is what the inside looks like and this is what the outside is going to look like. So as I pointed out too, when you're using the same color thread and this is not perfect stitching as you can see, it really doesn't matter. This is the underside of the, of the club and with the correct color thread, it's all going to blend in quite nicely. So now that we've applied the elastic to our actual head cover piece, we are now going to attach the elastic to the lining. However, the lining only needs one piece of elastic as opposed to the three we put on the front. Um, so in this case, we'll just start in the middle of the notches, doing the same application that we did before with the top. We'll tack it in place a few times and then move forward a bit. So I've got something to grab onto and then we'll pull it. Maybe not as tight as we did the, the uh, initial vinyl but enough to gather it up a bit and then tack again and so there you go we have one row of elastic for the lining okay now moving on to the next step okay we are now at step six and step six is sewing the top and bottom together uh, and I've discovered if you just kind of lay the two pieces right side together and attempt to sew all the way around because of this gathering it gets a little distorted so here's the trick I have discovered is that we are going to line up the notches on one side first and we're going to pin it straight down or clip it I'm sorry in this case clip it straight down to the bottom I've got a little overage here that doesn't matter we'll trim that to size okay then the same thing on this side we're going to start at the notches line up the notches we're going to clip it straight down and we're going to sew this first from here to here and from here to here so we're going to go back to a straight stitch and I do have a leather needle inserted into my sewing machine. Um, it seems to be a little more durable than any, you know, a universal needle or whatever. So if you do have a leather needle, use it. Um, it it's not extremely important, however, if you don't. Okay, so we're going to start sewing. I'm going to use the presser foot's all mixed up. 
I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot as the uh, seam allowance guide, which is basically about a quarter of an inch. So we're going to back tack here. We're going to sew over the notch. And I'm just pulling the elastic out a little bit. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And then back tack at the end. Okay. So we have sewn from there to there. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to start at the bottom up so that I can see what I'm doing. But, oops, sewing machine needle came unthreaded. I've rethreaded my needle, so we're going to start over. I'm going to back tack. And then we're going to sew straight up using the edge of the presser foot as my guide for seam allowance. And. I'm going to sew over all three rows of elastic. And if I need to flatten them out a little bit first, I will. There we go. And I'm going to stop here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew upwards. And if you have a differential like this, it doesn't really affect the size. I don't know why I have it. I must have cut the pattern out incorrectly. It's not much, as you can see, as we flatten it out. If I had tried to go all the way around, starting here and sewing all the way around, this would have become so um, out of whack. But just having like this little differential isn't really going to hurt. So we're going to once again start right here with my previous stitching. And I'm going to follow the shape of this piece. Using my foot as the guide for the seam allowance. Join the two. So, in this case, I will want to trim this seam allowance down to maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, it'll lay better if I do. Just trim it around close to the stitching, like this. Cut off the notches. And the excess fabric. Now this might not be as necessary to trim it like this if you are using fabric, but with the vinyl, I want to have an, a nice smooth half circle at the top. So I trim it a little, a little close. So this would be our top of our head cover. I would have an embroidery thing here normally or an applique or some sort of club, club designator. And then that, this is our back. Okay, now it's time to join the lining together as we did the, um, the body pieces uh, of the head cover. So we're going to once again line up the notches and we're going to clip from the notch down. And don't worry if it's not even at the bottom, we will even it up before we attach it to the head cover. Oops. Again, on the other side from the notch, downward, okay, all right, we are going to now start at the bottom using, again, the edge of the presser foot as my seam allowance guide. We're going to back tack. And I'm going to do my best to keep the edges of this minky together. And, oh. and get up here and go over 
the elastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to continue to sew up until like the very beginning of this curve because we want to leave the top edge open. So I'm just going to continue on until I get to right about here. And then I'm going to back tack so that the seam doesn't come undone when I am turning. So one side is finished. Now we're going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to start at the top though because I want to be able to see my elastic. So I'm going to join this up, join that up, join that up, and start at approximately the same position. So I'm going to back tack at the top here. Bring my raw edges together if necessary. Bring that in. Over the elastic, once again, bring my raw edges together. Hold them in place with my fingers. And back tack at the bottom. So I have a little bit of a difference here, so I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of even it up. This is not going to affect any part of the head cover. So now as you can see we have our lining all prepared with an opening at the top for turning. Now that we have joined the um, top and bottom uh, pieces together we are now going to attach the lining as, um, as it states in step number eight. So the first thing we want to do always is um, so right sides together. So I'm going to turn this lining piece inside out. And then I'm going to align the portion that has the elastic with the portion that has the elastic on the top. I'm going to reach my hand in here, grabbing this, and I'm just going to stuff it inside, right sides together. So pull my hand out, keeping the lining inside. Now we're going to line up these bottom edges. So starting at the side seams, we will clip in place. So one cl clip at that side, one clip at this side, and one clip in the middle here. And what we're basically going to do is just kind of ease this um, minky fabric in to the um, space that it needs to be. So I'm going to start in the middle pull this back a bit so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to try to keep my raw edge of the um, minky up against the raw edge of the vinyl using my presser foot as my seam allowance guide. I'm just going to slowly sew all the way around like this. And you have to use your other hand and kind of pull, pull this back a bit so you can see what you're doing. And if the minky appears to be larger than the vinyl, just kind of ease it in, as I said. And you want the two sides to join. All right. So the next thing I would do is cut this seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch all the way around. There we go. All right, step number nine says for us to grab the lining from inside and pull it out. And then you want to bring wrong sides to wrong sides. So you're going to bring this bottom piece up to the top. All the way to the top. Okay, now 
what we're going to do at the top, I'm just trimming away some extra threads that I had. What we're going to do at the top is we are going to tack the top edge to the top edge of the head cover. I'm not going to sew all the way around the opening because that will cause this head cover to lose its shape a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the lining all the way up, maybe even over. And the reason we want to tack it is because we don't want the lining to come out of the club, the interior of the club, when we are pulling our golf club in and out of the head cover. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sew a straight little stitch back and forth, attaching the lining to the head cover in the seam allowance. And that's one side. And now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to bring the edges up together and I'm just going to just on the very edge attach the two pieces together. All right. So we still have our openings here on the side, but that doesn't matter because this head, this lining is always going to remain inside the head cover and uh, never be pulled out. So now we want to turn the whole project around. It's easier to kind of do this. Fabric is a lot easier to turn than vinyl. Vinyl has a tendency to want to stick to itself. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, and I'm going to use my hands and just kind of recreate this rounded shape at the top. And then we want to have a little bit of the lining as the finishing edge on the bottom. And there you have it, folks. Pretty simple. As I said, I did not do embroidery on this because I just wanted to show you um, how to do it. I want to tell you something about the shape. Um, obviously, vinyl is not going to hold its shape as well as the cotton structure does um, or the, the structure with the quilting. So if you didn't like this, what you could do to alleviate it is maybe add piping all the way around. But um, I see this all the time and I think it looks great. So that's just a suggestion if that kind of bugs you a little bit. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions about how to create this or anything else um, regarding any of my patterns, don't hesitate to contact me at info at Golf Gear by Darcy. Thank you.